Michael, aka Greycast, who will introduce us with a, an exciting project for the Kaiser Tracks for dissecting media files on it. Hello, everyone, and thank you for joining me today. Um, my name is Michael Yakshin, and I'd like to talk about dissecting media file formats today uh, with uh, the tool named Kaita Struct. So, uh, what's the idea? Um, media file uh, formats grow complex and more complex every day. Media software developers have to deal with a multitude of different media file formats. Some of them are well documented, but still uh, pretty complex to process. Some of them are proprietary and undocumented and need to be reverse engineered. It's even more complicated task and uh, requires uh, quite a few hurdles to jump. Uh, for example, one need to do the proper black box reverse engineer to be included into free and open source project without major legal problems. One need to do uh, lots of testing uh, making some hypotheses, uh, proving them right or wrong, and doing some decisions, mapping some proprietary format step by step, exploring it, and doing some kind of um, description or specification of such problem. Uh, basically, the mission uh, that such a developer must overtake is uh, going uh, from byte representation of file format in a stream, loading in, into memory, and sometimes going back from memory to a stream. Uh, that is, we have uh, some kind of uh, stream that needs to be dissected into some objects laid out in memory, usually in some kind of tree or a graph of objects. <coughs> a typical development workflow for such a process involves uh, writing some parsing code with certain pro programming language. Uh, then you write some extra debugging code to uh, ensure that it actually works, because um, you need to somehow prove that it works. You either dump it to the screen, check some assertions, uh, run with it with a debugger or something like that. Then you just basically debug it till you drop, uh, because parsing uh, binary formats is, um, well, not exactly a trivial task. There are quite a few pitfalls to overcome, like going over some boundary inside some soft structure, uh, dealing with endianness, dealing with uh, byte alignment, dealing with uh, a few other things like assertions, checks, um, barely specified formats, some special cases, conditional reading, writing, etc., etc. Um, as soon as you finish uh, such a big task, you get some sort of parsing library that loads uh, objects from stream into memory. But uh, what then? Uh, if you want to support some other programming language, uh, you just basically need to redo the whole, whole process from the start. Uh, doing basically the same code in some other programming language imperatively. Uh, actually, almost every media format library I've encountered has these dumping tools. Uh, on this slide, uh, I've listed some of them. Uh, then they're, they're not just for... Um, Random reason. They are there for reason. They are needed by developers of these two libraries to debug their tools and to see if they really work. Um, needless to say, that errors in file format libraries can be really devastatingly dangerous. Uh, almost every such uh, an error, such as buffer overflow, such as uh, reading beyond uh, some part of structure, interpreting something wrongly uh, because of human errors in writing the code, etc., etc., are always, almost always remotely exploitable. They frequently provide arbitrary code execution, especially if we're talking about 
uh, buffer overflows in libraries written in languages such as C. Uh, they leak information. They usually can lead to denial of service errors. For example, in libpng since 2010, there were 22 vulnerabilities and uh, quite a few of them are really dangerous. In libjpeg, uh, for example, there are full vulnerabilities, uh, but they're still dangerous as well. If we'll uh, revert uh, to the start and see what format uh, file format specifications exist, we'll discover that there is no single universally accepted standard. Uh, actually, uh, if we'll take a look at uh, the documents provided by file format uh, authors, there are quite a few things invented to describe by file format, such as, for example, C structures, as we see here with ELF uh, headers, such as intricate tables, as we see here with uh, network tables protocols, such as even more intricate tables, as we see here with um, some random page describing uh, Microsoft Word uh, document format. Um, that maps some bytes, bits, and to try to explain its values. Um, network protocol engineers uh, have something better to rescue. They've got Wireshark that is universally accepted to uh, be a tool of trade uh, that allows to dissect the packets and see what's inside in some kind of tree format. Uh, Basically, you have the dump. You can uh, point at any byte in the dump and see what uh, values in the protocol in uh, the packets it corresponds to and vice versa. But what about um, the same stuff for media files? Um, it's a bit complicated. Uh, there are quite a few <coughs> proprietary tools available, such as one zero one editor or uh, hexinator or synalyze it, as uh, some of you may be familiar with. Uh, but generally, uh, there is no um, universal acceptor, or at least uh, uh, a tool that supports enough popular formats to dissect and uh, to build upon. Uh, well, so. Basically, we've uh, tried to fulfill uh, this hole and uh, go actually one step ahead of it. So I'd like to present a Kaita struct project, which is a um, declarative file format specification language. Um, all the words in this phrase are actually meaningful. Uh, the emphasis is on the declarative. It means that uh, we do not actually specify uh, how to read the format, but we specify what is inside the format. Uh, and it's uh, harder to implement in some cases, but it gives us quite a few advantages I'd uh, like to uh, show a bit uh, further in the presentation. Um, we can compile our uh, case Y file that uh, we've uh, set up uh, with the file format specification into ReadyMate parsers libraries in uh, quite a few target programming languages that I'll demonstrate further. And uh, quite as well, we can visualize, dump, and debug all these file format specifications using uh, several tools that were built around the Kaistai struct project, uh, such as visualization tools, uh, such as WebID, that I'll demonstrate further as well. Uh, KSY format is uh, YAML based and that's actually a good thing because it's very easy to you write your own tools. For example, uh, it's quite a snap to write a tool that would um, embed one KSY file into another KSY file. It's generally a matter of writing a script in five or ten uh, lines and it's quite easy. Uh, it's last but not least, it's free and liber. Um, we use GPLv3 for the compiler and uh, actually generated code uses some runtime libraries that we supply as well. 
and uh, they are MIT or Apache 2 licensed. So uh, even if the compiler is GPL, it's possible to use uh, the proceedings of the compiler in proprietary uh, products as well. We support eight uh, target languages right now. It's C++, C Sharp, Java, JavaScript, Perl, PHP, Python, and Ruby. As a bonus, we support output to graphics. Uh, I'll demonstrate it further. It's quite interesting side project as well. As experimental features, uh, right now we are developing Swift support. We are developing support for exporting KSY files as Wireshark descriptors to be able to load the same declared formats into the Wireshark uh, interface and see there. And uh, some quite a few other <laughs> probably interesting target formats. So, how does it look? Uh, the natural API generated by Kaita struct looks something like that. Uh, here we have a demonstration of GIF file, GIF file, uh, loaded. Um, generally, um, the Kaita struct file declares a tree of objects. Uh, here, for example, we have the header, the logical screen descriptor, global color table, etc., etc. Uh, and generally it boils down to traversing this tree of pro uh, objects uh, from some start that, um, for example, this code in Java uh, starts with uh, gif dot from file that loads uh, some, uh, f that parses some gif uh, data from the file. And then you just uh, do this file dot something dot something dot something and extract the data right away. For example, this is one liner that uh, shows uh, the screen width and height, uh, this, which is actually the dimensions with visible fragment of GIF image uh, right away in one line of code. Uh, this is uh, our web ID. Uh, probably it's much better to just demonstrate it right away. Uh, this is uh, probably now the main working place of a developer that wants to uh, get his, has, his or her hands dirty with uh, Kaita struct. Here we have uh, simultaneously an editor to uh, see uh, and edit the case Y file it's on upper left corner. In upper right corner there is a hex dump of some loaded file. Here we have uh, a Microsoft AVI file and its corresponding uh, format description. Uh, in, as uh, you may have seen in such editors like 101 editor or hexinator or other proprietary editors it's possible to select any byte in uh, the stream and go exactly to some value in the object tree in uh, lower bottom corner uh, to see what this byte corresponds to. And as well, one can traverse uh, open and close arbitrary objects in the object tree as well and um, see how it looks like. Uh, it's fully interactive, um, changing a single um, symbol in the case Y code recompiles everything uh, conservatively and uh, tries to uh, re implement, reiterate, uh, reparse uh, the file in a new way that uh, you just specified. So, for example, if you add some lines of code that uh, add a parsing of some new field, it would just appear right away. You don't need to basically just <laughs> doing anything. For those who want uh, some more console <laughs> hardcore uh, style um, parsing, there is also a console visualizer. Here we have uh, the JPEG file loaded into it. Uh, it doesn't look just as flashy as the web one, but <laughs> It works just as well. Uh, it doesn't feature a 
separate editor, of course. You're expected to have your own editor on console or whatever you want to use in some other window. So it focuses just on visualization. Um, you have the same tree, you have the same binary dump, you can traverse it and see if uh, the file specification you've just entered matches what you expect to see or not. Uh, this is how uh, our case Y files look like. Basically, it's YAML. It uh, allows us to uh, set up some fields, some field types. Um, and that is important because it's declarative and not imperative. Uh, on the left, we see our declarative specification. On the right we see what it compiles usually to uh, into some kind of uh, imperative code. Note that uh, we do not have uh, things like while loops, we do not have things like direct ifs, any conditional controls, um, any jumps, any basically any code flow that is uh, imminent in imperative implementations. We just use, uh, we just describe the file structures. If there is some repetitions, we enter it as repetitions. If there are some conditional parsing, we enter it as conditional parsing. And uh, it brings up quite a few uh, possibilities, interesting, interesting possibilities that are possible. Uh, we have uh, quite a few built in data types, such as integers, floats unaligned bit integers and bit fields, strings, robite arrays, enums, and of course we allow to define user-defined data types. We have uh, sequential parsing, parsing holds one by one in sequence. We have out-of-order parsing, something called instances, uh, so you can uh, seek in a file actually to uh, do some uh, parsing of other parts of file by some index or offset. Uh, we have calculated attributes to uh, ease uh, representation of uh, something that uh, we've got from the file in some more popular form. Uh, we've got checking for magic signatures such as fixed content and counter, for example, in headers. We have conditional parsing. We have type switching on a condition, uh, something like switch. Uh, we have repetitions until the end of stream, repetitions in predefined number of iterations, or until some condition is met. Uh, we have powerful expression language that could be used almost everywhere, and that's a good thing because it actually uh, compiles into uh, direct uh, expression code in some other languages. Uh, for example, this one shows how the, uh, we can <coughs> parse the attribute named full lamb that uh, allows us to specify unsigned integer four bytes long in uh, the first place. And then we parse as many elements as we need, uh, calculating the number of elements as full length minus four divided by six. Um, so, this is how, how it compiles to C++. This is how it compiles to Python. You can see that the code is quite different. And so it's how it compiles to JavaScript. Another uh, difference is that, for example, JavaScript doesn't have the integer uh, division, so we implement it with uh, math.flow. And that's another one that I wanted to demonstrate interesting uh, stuff about the graphics visualization. Uh, basically, we compile stuff to graphics, and uh, this is uh, what we've got. It's a human-readable diagram that one can pass to his colleagues, one can uh, pass to other people uh, to just take a look at the format and implement it, for example, in some other programs. We've got a ground repository of formats, including tons of formats <laughs> right now. It's, um, it's quite interesting. Um, you can find it at our GitHub page and see for yourself if uh, there will be anything interesting of you there. 
there are quite a few image file formats, video file formats, audio file formats, archives, documents, executables, file systems, etc. etc. Thanks for your attention. Uh, I'd like to see if any questions arise. The question was uh, about uh, handling incorrect uh, values in uh, complex expression language uh, expressions. Uh, so basically, there is no internal checking in Kaifa struct. It just compiles uh, the expression as I show you. And in runtime, it will probably arise some sort of exception or error. Uh, and this would be specific to a particular target language uh, that uh, you compile this code to. Please? Yeah, so um, I noticed you, you, you have mostly container formats in that list, which are generally roughly byte stream based. What about uh, codecs that have bit stream fields that are quite compli complicated, like Mesa Hoffman codes or Golan codes or um, various different, they have much more complex bit streams that we'd like to analyze. Do you, is it possible to write um, in your definitive language the way that you parse these bit streams? Uh, yes, since, uh, um, yeah, sorry. Uh, the question was about parsing bit streams uh, with more complex codecs like uh, Hoffman codes, uh, et cetera, et cetera. Uh, so yeah, uh, since uh, version 0.6, uh, we have support for uh, reading bit streams. It's slowly growing. Probably it's not very uh, optimal to parse bit streams per se uh, to fulfill uh, simple operations like unpacking something or um, un uncompressing something. Uh, probably it's more efficient to use some special, uh, some special processing onto the whole byte uh, stream here, but uh, it also can be done. Uh, I don't see any major problems here. Could you repeat it a bit louder? Um, your compilers that are generating the uh, parser code, um, can they generate living parsers or only um, parsers that meet the whole file? Like can it also generate uh, streaming um, parsers? If reading a stream instead of a whole, do you have to read a whole file or can you only read, like a uh, partially read stream when you were on? Right now, the API, um, repeating the question, yeah? Um, the question was about uh, reading uh, something from a stream, not from the whole file from the disk. Um, right now, the API uh, allows to basically do reading and parsing from two sources, from a file on disk or from arbitrary array in memory. If you can organize uh, <laughs> the parser in some way that would uh, be, for example, chunk based that would um, parse one chunk and then stop. It's no problem to um, go with this chunk based stream uh, that you would somehow buffer in memory and add to this buffer again and again and recall the parser. So I guess uh, that would be. Uh, there are several poss um, The question was about uh, adding annotations to YAML file to uh, have more human uh, readable representation of whatever's going on there. There are quite a few possibilities to do so. 
we are allowed to add uh, some annotations uh, to fields to be parsed as doc strings into the target code. So, for example, if you load it into IDE, you just uh, see whatever uh, the comment for the field are. Uh, we are allowed in uh, web ID there are several syntaxes that allows you to mark up some formatting for the representation, for example, choosing the hex representation, binary representation, or decimal representation, etc., etc. And last but not least, you can do uh, calculated <coughs> values that uh, allow you to represent something in more human readable way as well. Thanks. Uh, the bit flags are parsed using the bit parsing syntax usually, and uh, you usually get them as um, separate fields that you can basically uh, touch in every way you want to. Okay, so thank you. I'm sorry, there are a lot of questions, but I'm sure you are available after the, the talk.